going to be your host for this evening. We are recording tonight's presentation, so if you want to go back and look at it later, you will be able to do that. I typically send out the recording link a few hours after the webinar, as long as there's no technical problems. Um, we're going to be joined later tonight by uh, with Daniel from Desjardins. He's going to give a little information on Desjardins, but here's the itinerary for this evening. Do a quick introduction of myself and the stock scores. I'm going to talk about the stock scores investing concept, how we measure performance in the market, a little something called reward for risk and what that means and why it's important. Go through the economics of trading. I'm then going to show you the process for finding position trades. So these are more like investments, things that you would hold a little longer term, but certainly not long term. We'll go through the components of the stock scores approach to investing, how you can become a stock scores investor, and then at the end of the presentation, I will take your stock questions, we'll do a little market analysis and give you a sense of where some of the stocks you have an interest in are likely to go using my analysis. All right, so let's get into it. I started trading about 25 years ago. At the time, I didn't have a lot of capital. I you know, had a little bit of money that I had saved up and I borrowed some from my credit card and started with about $3,000, which I used to buy my first stock. As I was working my way through university, I was pretty avid as a trader of, of stocks, mostly penny stocks, because again, I was a student, I didn't have a lot of money, that's sort of where I focused. And as I built up my capital base, I started to expand my horizons a little bit. Um, in the early years, most of the work that I did was very time consuming, because the tools that I needed didn't exist. And um, when I left university, I decided that a good business or project for my trading was to develop my own tools. And so that's what I did in the late 90s into 2000. I developed um, a website called stockscores.com, which I use even today to identify my trading opportunities. It's got some really powerful tools for scanning the market, for finding things um, without missing them, and, and finding things early in their trend. And that's what I'll be showing you tonight. Um, I also, in 2001, developed education for others to learn my approach. Um, I had been running a, a stock market club in Calgary. It had a, a couple hundred members, and I was really being pushed by that membership to come up with some way to teach my methods. And so I taught my first course in 2001, and I've been teaching a couple times a year ever since. I used to teach classes live. We now do it all online. And I will talk a little bit about that later this evening. <clears throat> so what is the stock scores investing concept? Well, most stocks, most of the time, are not worth trading. The stock market is efficient. It's very good at, um, at uh, pricing in information. It's very good at representing the true value of stocks, of markets, of commodities, of currencies. It's only those rare times when the market efficiency breaks down that you have an opportunity to earn a really a, a market beating return in the market. And what I did 15, 20 years ago is come up with some algorithms that help me find stocks that are likely moving on their own story, likely moving abnormally, and really are stocks that are going to beat the market. Most stocks, most of the time, just do what the market does. You know, the market goes up 2%, a stock with a beta of 1 goes up 2%. You know, today the market was generally down, and most stocks in the market went down. However, there were some stocks today that went up because they were moving on their own story. And the characteristics of those stocks are what I uh, worked uh, a long time to figure out. And once I figured that out, I, I also came up with ways to trade them. Having said that, there's more to trading than buying the right stock. Most people are focused in on the entry decision. They always think about what stocks to buy, or maybe if you're a short seller, you think about what stocks to short. But the more essential component of being successful in the market is actually risk management. Knowing how to uh, manage risk, size your positions, when to get out at a loss, when to get out at a profit, how to preserve your capital, all of those things are really essential components of trading well. When I started trading, I was a pretty good stock picker, but I wasn't necessarily a great risk manager, and it showed in my performance. And it wasn't until I realized that risk management was more important than picking the right stock that I started to really do well. 
All right, now the next key component of my approach to the market is this. Most market-beating stocks start their trends with abnormal activity. If you go look at the 100 top performing stocks of the last six months, you will find that most of them started their market beating trends with abnormal activity. However, not all abnormal activity leads to those big market beating price moves. <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you in a minute what I mean by abnormal activity. Essentially, it's stocks making price gains that are greater than what the stock would normally do trading volume that is bigger than what the stock would normally do. Those are all examples of abnormal activity and if you find them in the right situation, you can identify the stocks that are likely to really outperform the market. Stocks that can go up 100% in six months, stocks can go up 30% in two days. Heck, you can even find stocks that go up 30% in a few hours. And they all start their market beating trends with abnormal activity. Now, if you go out and buy every stock that trades abnormally, you won't make any money. You have to qualify the abnormal activity with some extra rules to really identify the stocks that have the best potential. So, you know, we don't want to buy stocks that have been going up for three months already and then start to behave abnormally. And we don't want to buy stocks that have been going down in a downward trend and start to behave abnormally because those stocks have issues that will hurt their overall performance. We want stocks that meet other criteria in addition to abnormal activity. So here's some examples. GMAN, real market beating stock, you can see it went from $4 to $8, but it started that move with abnormal activity. The price jump on the day that I'm circling right now, and I'll actually take out my little drawing tool here so I can show you this. So on that day right there, it made a statistically significant abnormal price gain. And you can also see that the volume on that day was also much higher than normal. So it had abnormal price, abnormal volume, and that started a very strong price trend for the stock. Here's another one. It started to behave abnormally right here. You can see the volume was higher than normal. And this stock went into a real strong upward trend, which ultimately went to $2 before it got stuck. It's since pulled back to uh, around in this price zone that we're in now. So I don't know anything about these companies. I have no idea what Gold Gordman Stores does. I assume they sell stuff. Patient home monitoring, some kind of healthcare company, I would guess. I have no idea. What I know is that the people that know the most about this company started to buy that stock aggressively here because they knew that the fundamentals of the business were getting better. And as more and more people learned about that, the stock was able to go into a strong upward trend. If you're buying up here, you're part of the public. You're buying retail. If you're buying down here, you're part of the well-informed group of investors. You're buying wholesale. I want you to buy wholesale. Now you can also say, well, let's try to buy these stocks in here. But the probability of success of finding things early in the trend is not very good. You're better to wait for the abnormal activity to start. And sure, you might miss out on the first little bit of the move. You know, if we buy that first day, yeah, we miss out on a little bit of the move. But we also have a much higher probability of success so that we get to enjoy most of the big upward trend without sitting in stocks for a lengthy period of time when they are doing nothing. Now, how do we measure performance in the market? Most people will say, well, I made $2,000 on that trade, or I made 20% on that trade. The problem with doing that is it doesn't consider the risk you took to make the profit that you made. Performance must be measured in consideration of risk. If you make $1,000, but your potential loss is $2,000, you're fighting an uphill battle. You want to judge your performance using the concept of reward for risk. If I make $1,000, but I only risk 200, then I've made a reward for risk of five. I risk 200, I made 1,000, that's five times my risk, that is a good trade. If we risk $2,000 to make $1,000, then my risk was only a half. 
0.5. That is not a good trade. Now the economics of investing really bear this out. We want to measure success over a large number of trades. We want to do or apply strategies where you can make money consistently over time, but you don't know if you're going to make money on the very next trade. So that's how I approach the market. I am a strategy trader. I want to do something where if I repeat it over and over and over again, I make money. I don't know if I'm going to make money on the next trade. I don't know if I'm going to make money this week or this month. But what I know is if I consistently apply my rules, I can make a profit. And I do that by developing a set of rules that have a positive expected value. Now here's how that works. Suppose we have a strategy. Let's say I say buy any stock that starts with A that goes up 3% or more. That's a silly strategy, but let's just say that's our rules. Buy any stock that has a symbol that starts with A and goes up 3% or more. Well, let's say I apply that strategy and I test it over 100 trades and I find that 60% of the time I have a loser and 40% of the time I have a winner. My average loser is $500 and my average winner is $1,500. How much do I make or lose after I do 10 trades? Well, think about that a little bit. If six out of 10 times I lose 500 and four out of 10 times I make 1500, do I make money after 10 trades? Well, here's the economics of it. Six times 500 is $3,000 in losses out of those 10 trades. Four times an average profit of $1,500 is $6,000 in profits over those 10 trades. So even though I have a losing track record where I lose money 60% of the time, I actually make a profit of $3,000 over those 10 trades because my winners are much bigger than my losers. And so the key when you're trading effectively is to take small losses and have bigger gains. Out of 10 trades, I find that I have typically two bigger winners, stocks that earn a reward for risk of five or more. I also find that I have four to five losers and three to four smaller winners. And what tends to happen is the small losers balance out by the smaller winners, but it's those two big winners where all my profit comes from. And the key in this style of trading is to have the patience to ride the big winners. That is where the overall profit comes from. So what are we looking for? How do we find the stocks that have the best potential? Well, really what we want to do is find stocks that are showing signs of investor excitement. We want to look for abnormal activity, but we want to do so from predictive chart patterns. We want to look stop for stocks that are making breakouts through resistance, that are doing so from low volatility, that have optimism in their charts, and those that have stock scores indicators that are in the right place. Now, this checklist that I've just shown you is for position trading. You don't do this for shorter term day trading or swing trading. The stock scores indicators are important when you are position trading. And I'm going to show you these in just a moment. So on stock scores, if you go to the stock scores website, you can pull up the chart of any stock. So here I have, let's pull up Microsoft. And here you can see Microsoft has a sentiment score of 57 and a signal score of 57. For this set of rules, we want stocks that have a sentiment stock score of greater than 60. This is for position trading. We want stocks that have a signal stock score of greater than 80. And if they have both of those things, then we check the chart to see if it has a predictive chart pattern. A chart pattern that looks like this is called an ascending triangle. And when you get that pattern, along with these two things, that stock has a high probability of moving into an upward trend. So let's look at our examples from earlier. Rule number one, sentiment stock score greater than 60. That's the green line on this chart. And you can see that there's 50, and we were above 60 at point number one. We also had the blue line jump up above 80 at that moment. And on that same day, we also had the stock breaking from a predictive chart pattern, something called an ascending triangle. So we had above 60, above 80, and 
a break from a predictive chart pattern. Now, I've studied patterns for 25 years. I have spent countless hours learning how these patterns work, and I can tell you that when you see that pattern combined with those stock scores indicators being in the right place, you have a situation where that stock has a high probability of moving into an upward trend. If we go look at this example, there you can see our sentiment line is above 60. That's 60 right there. Our blue signal line jumps up above 80. You can see that's 80 right there. And when I go up from that point and I look at the chart, I see that this stock is breaking through resistance from optimism. I know it's optimism because there are rising bottoms. From low volatility, that stock is trading in a very narrow, quiet range and then comes alive with abnormal price action and abnormal volume. And that starts that stock moving into an upward trend. Now, why does that work? Well, essentially what's happening is the people who know this company the, the best, who follow this company very closely, get excited about the fundamentals changing there. And that's why the stock is able to break from this boring sideways trading pattern that it is in. Nobody cares about the stock here, but then the stock comes alive with abnormal activity and that starts the stock into its upward trend. Now that's all well and good, but unless you can find those stocks in a timely manner, you really can't benefit from those big moves. So we need a process for finding these trades and that process is using the stockscores.com market scan. So I'm going to jump over to stock scores now. I'm going to go to tools, go to market scan. Anyone that is a member of stock scores, anyone that's taken one of my classes can have access to this tool. And I'm going to select a scan, which I use for position trading, something called the stock scores simple strategy. And I've got scans built for the Canadian version or the US version. We're going to run the Canadian version first, run the report, it just went through every stock that trades in Canada and it found the ones that have good stock scores. You can see the scores are good. But we still have to inspect those charts to see if they have the right chart pattern. So I can view these charts one at a time. I can see there that this stock has optimism. I can see it's breaking through resistance a little bit, just kind of touching resistance. I like that eight month chart, but let me take a look at the three year. All right, this stock is in the early stages of a turnaround. You can see it's really been brutalized, but it's starting to build some optimism after really getting beat up for a while. So I would say that this stock is okay. Is it perfect? No. It doesn't have real strong volume today, and it's not made a real strong breakthrough resistance. So I would rate this one a 6 out of 10. And then I can go on to my next one. Now, the skill in reading a chart is something that I can teach you to do. It's not very hard. You need to understand six things. Once you understand those six things, you can look at this chart and say, that was the entry day. This is too late. Why is this too late? Because the stock has been rallying for two months already. Go to the next one. The stock looks pretty good. It's going to run into some selling pressure in the 80 to 90 cent range, so I don't love it. I always like to take a look at the longer term chart as well, and there I get confirmation that it's got quite a bit of resistance in that 80 to 90 cent range. So although I do think that this stock can go higher, I don't think it has the reward for risk potential that I like to see. And that's my process. I scan, go through charts, looking for those that have the right kind of pattern. And when I see one, I do my analysis for risk and determine whether that stock should be bought or not. So I'm just going to cycle through a few of these here. If I see something that I like, I'll let you know. Now you'll notice I'm going through these quite quickly. When you first start doing this, you'll go through them slower, but within a couple of months, you can be going through as quickly as I am now. I'm just going to take a look at a three-year of this one. So this looks like a decent reversal story. It broke through resistance here from optimism from sideways trading, and I think now it looks likely to continue higher. So this is a pretty good looking chart. I would rate it a seven out of 10. That's Russell Metals on the Toronto Stock Exchange, T.R.U.S. I would rate it a 7 out of 10. This one, it's too late. This stock started its upward move right back here. Notice above 60, above 80, abnormal volume, abnormal price action. That price move stands out. It broke out through resistance with good stock scores, with good volume, with a good pattern. This pattern on this chart 
is something called an ascending triangle. I'll actually draw the lines on here for you. I'm just going to use a little tool that I have called Snagit, which allows me to draw on anything on the internet. And I'm just going to uh, draw some lines for you. So there is my lines across my bottoms. Here's a line across my tops, which I'll draw in red because it represents a ceiling. And you can see that the stock broke through that resistance level right here with strong volume with good stock scores. And what happened to that stock? Up it goes. Why did that stock do that? Why did investors suddenly have a willingness to pay more than $25 for this stock when no one had been willing to pay more than $25 for months? It's because the fundamentals were better. And the people that follow that company the closest knew that and they started bidding the stock up. The public is buying here. The smart money is buying down here. And I want you to be part of that smart group and you don't have to know anything about the company. You just have to follow the people that know the most. All right, let's go. We got two more charts to look at. Don't like that one. And that one's okay. Yeah, I don't like that one enough. Okay, so you can see that there's all kinds of preset market scans in here. There's all sorts of them. If you want to do your research work each evening, you're going to do the stock score simple strategy. If you want to do your research on the weekends, you're going to do the stock score simple weekly strategy. Another great strategy that's working really well right now is the pullback play strategy. I can run that on the Canadian market and check the charts. Now, in this case, I'm looking for something very different. And I'll just cycle through these to see if there's any that I like. This one's pretty good. Raging River Exploration looks quite likely that it will continue its upward trend. Buy it here with a stop at 890. Decent potential that that trade will work. Is it a guarantee? No. I would say it's got a 70% chance of making money and a 30% chance of going down to $8.90 and being stopped out. This one, White Cap Resources, nah, it's not quite there. It's close. All right, so how do I know what to look for? I'm going to show you that in just a moment. There's a number of components to a trading strategy or a trading approach. First is you need a strategy. You need a set of rules for when to buy, when to sell, how to manage risk. You also need some skills in reading charts. Anyone can learn it. It just takes a little bit of time and direction. You need a process. How can you identify those stocks that are going to beat the market, whether you want to do the work every day, all day as a day trader, where you want to do the work for an hour a day as a swing trader, whether you want to do the work in the evening for 15 minutes as a position trader, or whether you want to do the work on the weekends for 15 minutes as a longer term position trader. You need a process. The basic skills are the same, no matter how quickly you want to trade, day trade, position trade, swing trade. What differs is the process. What differs is the chart that you look at. And to help you with the process, you need good tools. Now, you can hand a wrench to someone who knows nothing about cars and tell them to change the alternator. They're not going to be able to do it. The tool is only useful if you've got the skills and the knowledge to apply the tool. And so a big part of what I do is not only provide the tool, which has a lot of things that you won't find anywhere else, but I also give you the knowledge on how to use the tool and support to learning that tool so that you can be effective. Now, if you have all of those things, you still need emotional control and discipline. You need to understand why human beings make mistakes in the stock market, how being a normal human being makes you predisposed to fail in the stock market, and how you can overcome those things. And finally, you need capital. The most important thing that I teach people is how to preserve their capital. We do not want to eat away at our capital. So when I start teaching people, I have a series of steps that you go through toward getting to that point where you're actually risking your capital. You don't start risking your entire retirement savings down here. You have to cross a few thresholds to get to that point where you're now ready to start investing your capital. Now, how do you learn? Two ways. You can do what I did, which is the hard way, and that was to develop and test my own strategies. I started when I was 19 years old. It took me eight years and a whole lot of expensive lessons before I was really successful. Now, I paid my way through university. I did okay, but I didn't make real good money until I was eight years into my trading career. 
The other way to do it is to have me teach you or someone teach you. I've been trading for 25 years and I've got a lot of experience, not only in trading but also teaching people how to trade. And anyone that purchases my stock scores trader training programs will benefit from that 25 years of experience. I'm going to very quickly go through the education component of what we do at Stock Scores, and then we're going to listen to Desjardins offer you some information on how to save a lot of money on this training. And then finally, I'll take your stock questions and we'll do some analysis together. Step one is read my book, The Mindless Investor. You can go to StockScores.com at the homepage, and there's a link there to buy that book. That's going to give you some basic concepts of my approach. Once you've done that, then you can start working through the foundation material on our website. Now, if you buy the Stock Scores Foundation course, I'm going to give you that book as well. If you buy any of my courses, I'm going to send you my book as part of the deal. If you do the foundation course, what you're learning are some core skills for analyzing stocks. It really sets you up so that you can either learn how to be an active trader, which is the webinar that we did on Tuesday, or learn how to be a position trader, which is tonight's webinar. So what are each of these things including? Well, online on Stock Scores website, we have something called the Stock Scores Education Center. It's broken up, broken up into four zones. There's a getting started, which is some free stuff on how the stock scores work, the basics of charting, that sort of thing. And then we have the foundation area. I'll show you this in a moment. In the foundation, there are a number of lessons with each having a written component that you can print out a video that you can watch from your computer or smartphone or tablet, an assignment that I want you to do to make sure you understand the concepts, and then a test to really gauge whether you know what you're doing. Once you have done the foundation, then you're ready to move on to my strategies. I have investor strategies for people that want to position trade, who don't want to spend as much time on the market, and I have active trader strategies for people that want to day trade and swing trade, more time required. Each of the strategies has a written lesson and a video explaining the rules and the processes. So let's jump into stock scores again. And this time we're going to go into the education area. You can see that on the main menu here. And once I'm in the education, you can see I've got this foundation bundle. And here's all the lessons in the foundation. You want to learn how to read chart patterns? There's a written lesson for that. You can print it out. There's a little print icon right there. You can... I'll then watch the video that explains what's taught in that lesson. There you can see me highlighting a pattern with a break from a predictive chart pattern. You can also look at a written assignment where you are told to answer some questions. And you can see there how that works. You go through the questions and at the bottom of the questions, there is a video answer explaining the answers to those questions. And then finally, there is a multiple choice test where you can answer questions based on what you've learned to really assess whether you understood all of the aspects of that material. Now again, in the foundation, you're going to learn the core skills that prepare you for the implementation of my strategies. It's all of the base knowledge that you need to know how to apply my strategies. Once you get into the investor area, you're going to get access to the foundation as well. You're also going to get access to my investor strategies. You're going to get access to my Stock Scores Investor Strategy Market Scan so that when you go into the Stock Scores website and I go to the Market Scan tool, as an investor student, you're going to have access to these scans right here. There's about 10 of them. And they all have different purposes, different ways we look at the market. As you work through your educational process, you get email support from me. And you really get access to this tool, the Market Scan tool and our other tools, for six months as part of the course material, which you can then renew for $300 a year. Finally, there's the Active Trader course material. If you purchase the Active Trader course, you're going to get access to the foundation and the investor stuff, plus the Active Trader strategies. Within the Active Trader strategies, you just have more Market Scans. So if I go into here, you're also going to get access to these scans right here. These are my active trader scans. These are for day trading and swing trading. Now, tonight's presentation is on position trading, so you may not have an interest in these, but maybe one day you aspire to be a professional day trader sitting in your home buying and selling stocks. It's a great lifestyle. My commute is down the stairs from my bedroom into my office in the basement of my house, and um, 
you know, you can do it days you want to do it. You don't have to do it every day if you don't want to. In addition, you get email support from me and you get uh, the $300 a year renewal rate. Plus, you also get some proprietary real-time indicators that I've developed for some software that helps me find day trading strategies or day trading stocks sooner than most people. The final education option is mentorship. You get everything in the Active Trader package, so you get the foundation, the Active Trader, the Investor Trader, but you also get one-on-one -on -one coaching from me for six months. I do whatever you need to do. If you have questions for me, I'm there to help you. We typically meet on, uh, on a web meeting, much like this presentation, where we're talking live, and I can show you my screen, I can answer questions for you. Um, sometimes we'll meet on telephone, but I prefer to do it over the web, because then I can show you things as well. Here's the pricing. And again, I'm going to give you some options to lower this pricing in a second, for Canadians anyway. The foundation course, $995. Investor course, $24.95, but that includes the foundation. Active trader course, $34.95, but that includes the investor and the foundation. Mentorship, $74.95, which includes all of these things, plus one-on-one -on -one coaching for six months. All of these prices are in Canadian dollars, so for those of you from the U.S. or other places, you can do the conversion, but it's about, uh, I think, 17% less in U.S. dollars right now. If you start at the foundation and you want to work your way up to the investor, you pay $9.95, and then when you want to upgrade, you pay the price difference plus $250, so it'll be $1,250 to move to the next level. If you then want to go to this level, $1,250. So you're better off starting with the level you want, but if you want to work through it gradually, it's basically a $250 extra fee to do so. Now for those that are in Canada who are happy to move their brokerage business to Desjardins, which is the broker that I use, I've used them for seven or eight years, you can get a real good discount. Instead of paying $995, you can get that course material for free. That's the foundation course. If you want to do the investor course, instead of paying fourteen or twenty-four ninety-five, you pay one thousand. For the active trader, instead of paying thirty-four ninety-five, you pay two thousand. So if you open an account with Desjardins tomorrow, and you want to do the investor course, you're going to pay a thousand dollars. Mentorship sixty-nine ninety-five. So what I'm going to do now is open up the floor to Daniel from Desjardins. He's in the Vancouver office. For those of you that are in the process of opening an account, you've probably talked to Daniel quite a bit. He's a a great guy, very diligent in getting things done. He's going to talk for two or three minutes about Desjardins, and then I'm going to come back, talk about the upcoming May class, and take your stock questions. So, Daniel, are you there? I have to unmute you. Hold on just a second here. Um, Daniel, are you with us? Can you hear me, Daniel? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Great. So, go ahead. you got Perfect. a couple minutes to talk here. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, so first, I'd like, I'd like to thank all the attendees for joining us for the webinar today. Thank you very much. And there are four main reasons why you should consider making the switch to Desjardins Online Brokerage. First reason, Desjardins is safe. Desjardins is the sixth largest financial institution in Canada. We were recently rated in the Bloomberg Markets Report as the second safest bank in the world. So to put that in Canadian perspective, TD is mentioned in the article as fifth in North America but didn't even break the top 20 globally. I know this is important to you. We've passed events like the financial crisis when we saw several large institutions go insolvent. It can help you sleep better knowing that the financial institution you do business with is rated very safe. And we are also a member of the CIPF Canadian Investor, Pro Investor Protection Fund. Second, second reason, we're number one in customer satisfaction. This net has been awarded number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power Associate in 2014. And we have won the number one spot four times of the last five years. And we have promised to bring you great customer service and customer experience. We will always going to be there for you from opening and transferring your account to support using our platforms and tools. Reason number three, we are very reliable and cost-effective service. We were the first discount brokerage in Canada and have been in business for over 30 years. This experience translates to a reliable platform that you can count on. We offer real-time streaming quotes and fast execution. And this net is a direct access brokerage, which means your trades hit the market in one-tenth of a second. Most other bank-owned online brokerages use straight-through processing, which basically equates to you sending an email to their trading desk. 
Also, most direct access brokerages charge some charge something called ECN electronic communication fees, which we do not. And active traders can trade for as low as five dollars. But even if you're not an active trader, everyone can trade for 9.95 flat fee for equity trades. And we have very competitive margin rates for those who trade with leverage and offers three to one buying power for experienced traders. And the last reason is we have powerful tools and education. At this net, we know how hard it is to consistently beat the markets and match your accounts, so we are committed to bring you powerful tools. We offer tools like the Stock Scores Market Scanner, as well as Stock Scores Education to our clients, and substantial discounts for Stock Scores members looking to upgrade your knowledge and take their trading to the next level. So I would encourage you to visit our website, www.thisnet.com, to get more information and sign up for a free demo to try out any of our trading platforms. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate and feel free to contact me directly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, I just have a little special offer sheet up here. Anyone that opens an account before May 15th with Desjardins will also get three months of my daily newsletter. Um, <clears throat> here's Daniel's contact information, but actually the easiest way to get in contact with Daniel is just to respond apply yes to this uh, poll that I'm putting up on screen now. It lets Daniel and I know that you want uh, some email uh, or in, some information emailed to you. So if you, you say yes to this pres or to this question here, um, Daniel will email you his contact information tomorrow and then you can follow up with any questions you have about their services. As I said, I've traded with Desjardins for a long time. Uh, they're a great broker, great service, um, and Daniel and Wayne in the Vancouver office do a great job of looking after their customers, very personalized one-on-one -on -one service from them. So if you have any interest in um, sort of learning more about what uh, Disnat offers, what Desjardins offers, just say yes to the question, and uh, I will forward your email address on to Daniel. He will send you an email tomorrow with his contact information and a little bit more information about what Desjardins does. Um, I'll leave that up for another couple seconds here and then we're going to start to look at some stocks. Okay, so I'm going to shut this down here. <clears throat> now I know many of you have taken in this presentation already. If you've already requested information from Desjardin, you don't need to say yes again because you will have already received this. All right, so I'm going to close the poll here. Thank you for everyone that answered that. So little, uh, before I move on to the stock questions, just a quick note. I know most of you have been to these webinars lately before, but for those who haven't, I am doing a live online trading session in May. Start Saturday, May 23rd with an overview of the foundation material. So everything that's in uh, this section of the uh, Stock Scores Education Center. I'm going to give you an overview of that for about three hours. Much like today's presentation, you can ask me questions. You can uh, just follow along as I go through all this, but it's going to be me step by step going through these different topics. Really is a great way to sort of tie everything together. You can go through the material on your own, but I think it helps to have me go through it with you. And then on Tuesday, May 26th until Friday, May 29th, each evening we're going to do investor market scanning for those in the investor course, where I will do the market scans with you and we will practice reading charts. I'll give you my analysis of every chart that we look at and why it's good, why it's not good. Uh, for those who do the Active Trader course, you can watch me trade the market live, starting at market open from 6.30 for the first two hours, which is when most of the trades happen. I will actually just go through the process to find day and swing trades, and I'll actually make the trades with my own money. So you'll watch me do that if you are registered for the Active Trader course. Anyone who registers for the class coming up May 23rd, before May 15th, we'll get this live online training for free. If you wait until after May 15th, then the charge for that live online training, in addition to the course fee, will be $495. There's a little more information on the Stock Scores education packages at stockscores.com slash learn. I'll leave that up for a moment. If you would like um, some information about the upcoming class and you haven't received it already, just answer yes to this and I will send you an email with uh, some details about the upcoming May class. And um, now is a good time if you have some questions to submit them because what I'm going to do next is go through some charts and some questions that people have asked 
and we can then um, analyze things. I know if someone's asking about oil, some people are asking about individual stocks. So we'll go through a few of those as much as I can get done in the next little bit and uh, then we'll wrap up for the evening. So I'll just leave that up for another moment. Again, if you have any interest in either of the courses, Active Trader or the Investor course, just say yes to the question and I will send you an email uh, either tonight or tomorrow with some details about that upcoming May class. Uh, the May class is uh, starting May 23rd, but to get all of the online training for free, you have to register before May 15th. Helps me out if you register a little bit earlier. We can get everybody set up. I have to send a book to you. and I'd like you to have some time to go through the uh, online stuff before I actually start the class. You'll just get that much more out of the class by doing it that way. So the more you can get done before the class starts, the better off you will be. And then, of course, you have support from me after the class as well. All right, I'm going to uh, wrap up this question here. And if you are watching tonight's presentation as a video and you didn't get to request the information, then certainly send me an email and I can send you the details about the class. I am recording tonight's presentation because not everyone could attend. So it's uh, an easy way just to ask me via email for this information. I'll be happy to send it to you. Okay, I'm going to shut that down and we're going to do some stock questions. So um, I'm going to jump over to stock scores now and we're going to pull up some charts. So the first chart is TSS and the question is uh, are these suitable for position trades? So TSS is very good. I don't think it's great. Um, and the reason it's not great is it's been trending higher for some time already. I do think the stock looks likely to continue higher. And I think if you own the stock, you definitely want to hold it right now. But I'm uh, eager to buy it today based on what happened yesterday. Uh, it's a nice break. This is called a pennant pattern. And the pattern is built over two months. So it just meets my criteria in that regard. Good volume, good price action. I would rate this one a 7 out of 10. It's not a screamer because it's up, made quite a few steps higher already. But I do like it um, based on what I see there. Let's take a look at TTMI. I, I think this is a hold. I would not buy it, but I do think it is a hold. It's got good upward momentum. Um, but the long-term chart isn't great. It's really just stuck underneath a long-term downward trend line. So I don't love it, but I think if you own it, hang on to it, I wouldn't buy it. MMSI. Uh, this would be a hold as well. I would not buy it here. <coughs> the time to buy it was when it broke with abnormal activity back here. You can see our volume jumped higher, price action jumped, and that started the upward trend. I think now it's just it's a hold. I wouldn't sell it yet because the upward trend is still intact. Now notice I'm going through these really quickly and in just a matter of seconds I know whether they are good or bad. So I'm going to pull up another one here. This one's pretty good, not great. How do I know that? I just look for six things on that chart. They are optimism, pessimism, price volatility, abnormal activity, support, resistance. All of those things are taught in one of the first lessons, the six elements of chart patterns. Those are all taught in that lesson. And again, there's a written lesson and then there's a video that explains it. It's all right there. So that's how I'm able to do that analysis really quickly. Um, so getting back to Tesco, <coughs> pardon me, um, it looks like it's slowing its downward trend. A lot of the energy names look like this. This is an oil service company. I think that they're okay. I think maybe you nibble at one or two of them right now, but I wouldn't be a wholesale buyer of this sector just yet. I think it's still um, far from from strong. How do I feel about the run on oil, for example, USO? All right, well, let's do that analysis. So first of all, let's take a look long-term, three-year chart. You can see the bungee jump that oil made. There is still overwhelming pessimism in the sector. Having said that, the market is certainly stabilized and is starting to show some optimism again. Now, how do I know that there is optimism? Well, one of the things I can see is that we have rising bottoms on this chart, and in the last couple of days, oil has been able to break through resistance. That tells me that this is likely to go higher from here. Now, the question is how much higher? If you have a short-term outlook, then I think that this has some potential because it could rally up a few dollars. It could be moving up 20% on oil. But in the big picture, we're still below this downward trend line, and I think it's going to run into some resistance at $24 a 
on the USO, which is probably about $70 on the actual price of oil. So I think you have to be a trader to play the oil stocks right now. I wouldn't want you to, you know, buy them and close your eyes and forget about them. You might get lucky. They might work out, but I think it's still too early to be really bullish on the sector. All right, another one, CVEO. <clears throat> uh, this is a stock that I traded today. I day traded this today. I'll show you uh, the day trade on it. I bought it right here, and I added to my position later as well, held it into the close, made, uh, I think, just under four to one reward for risk. I actually, because I added to my position, I was able to uh, increase my profitability. But the question you're probably asking is longer term. Let's take a look at the three year. It's uh, still in a downward trend, breaking from a little rising bottom. If we take a look at a six month daily chart, you can see the breakout through resistance there. A little bit volatile into that. I'd rather see you buy it on a pullback, but I do like the chart. You can see we have um, sentiment stock score at 59. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not 60, but it's good enough. And our blue line really spiked up. Good volume today. A lot of things going on that are good in this stock. I like it looking out two months. I think it could be at $8. Looking out three days, it could go back to four. So if you're going to buy it here, just realize that there is a pretty good potential that will pull back before it goes higher. But if you're willing to ride out that pullback and you don't want to miss the boat on it, I think it's worth considering. Um... CYRX. So CYRX, um, not a very liquid stock. Number of trades today, only 19. See that number of trades, 19? That kind of means that if you want to get in and out of this stock, you got to phone a friend and see if they'll buy it from you. That's a little bit negative on that. Uh, the chart has got rising bottom, so that's a positive. Looking back a little longer term, I mean, I like the chart. What I just don't like is the liquidity. It makes the message of the market less reliable, and so I would shy away from it for that reason. FNMI, FNMI. So this is the old Fannie Mae. Um, it's been delisted off the big markets now in the OTC bulletin board, uh, home financing in the U.S., Chart is okay. It uh, again, liquidity only traded 43 times today, so it's not very liquid. Makes the message of the market quite less reliable, and I think I would stay away from it for that reason. Pattern is okay. It's building optimism, trying to break through resistance, but the lack of liquidity is what would make me stay away. Pioneer Energy Services (PES) um, broke to new highs today. I like this. I, I liked it better yesterday on the break of the pullback. This fit the criteria of my pullback play yesterday. I think to buy it here, yeah, a little risky for my liking. I'd rather see it pull back a little bit so you can get a little better price on it. It was actually a decent day trader today as well. If we take a look at the two-day on it. Um, traded some abnormal volume, broke out on what's called the superhero strategy. Gave a buy signal, one of my day trading strategies right there on the superhero and had a little run into the close. You know, if you own it, I would hang on to it. Would I buy it? I, I still think you got to be pretty cautious with some of those energy names. T.SVC. Uh, good hold. I think it's going to pull back. I think it's very likely to come back to $394 in the near term because at the top of a price channel right now, broke down a little bit today. That tells me it's pretty likely to pull back for a little while here. So, I mean, it's got some good upward momentum and building some optimism. I just think it got a little ahead of itself and probably pulls back to the $4, maybe even $3.90 range in the next week or so. Um, but still a good stock. FNM, FN, same. The, the other one was Fannie Mae. This is uh, um, one of the other mortgage companies. Again, lack of liquidity is the real problem there. I would be worried about that. T.LEG. Legacy oil and gas looks like a lot of energy names, breaking from a rising bottom, much like the oil chart. You compare that with the oil chart, that almost look the same. See that? Very, very similar. So it's going to trade off of oil. Oil is going to trade off of the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar has been weakening. That's helping the oil market move up. But the U.S. dollar is still in an upward trend. It's just a little bit of a pullback right now. So, you know, I've, I've said this a few times. I think you go out and if you have 20 stocks in your portfolio or 10 stocks in your portfolio, have one oil stock. Don't have a whole bunch of them just yet. I still think it's early innings in the turnaround. Um, if you're a trader, maybe you can do more. You know, you can trade these as swing trader, 
but as a position trader, I want you to still be cautious on these. Uh, we'll pull up one more of these, t.cum. Uh, this one had a real abnormal move to the upside today with some pretty good volume. Uh, let's take a look at the three-year. I think it's bottoming. I'd, I'd like it on pullbacks. I like it on weakness. I don't really want you to chase it higher because the pattern's pretty choppy. Good chance it pulls back a little bit before it goes higher, but, you know, break of a pullback and then starts to firm up again might be worth considering. More of a swing trade. V.ATE. Uh, good hold. Uh, the person that asked me this question bought it at 14 cents. That was good. Nice break from low volatility at 14 cents. It's now at 23 or so. Um, I think it's a good hold. Looks more likely to go higher than lower. Liquidity, questionable. 34 trades today. So that's going to be a little bit of a concern in terms of moving in and out of them. Uh, what do we got next here? BGCP. Um, good hold. I think it's too late to initiate a position, but if you own it already, I would hold it. Uh, CDE. I don't like this one. I think I would stay away from Coeur d'Alene Mining. MMP. Now, I don't know if you're asking about Canadian symbols. Um, if you ever ask me about Canadian symbols, make sure you put the prefix in front. I'm just going to check. Yeah, you are asking the U.S. symbols. That's great. MMP, um, it's okay. I, I I wouldn't rush out and buy it. Probably pays a decent dividend. Pays 3.36% dividend, which is decent. So on that basis, if you're looking for yield, then I think it's worth holding. But if you're looking for big capital gains, I don't love it in that regard. Uh, HIVE. I think it's a good hold. I think it's likely to pull back in the short term. It has been pulling back over the last uh, few days, but I think it could pull back a little farther. Um, but as a swing trade, I, I think there's something going on there, and I do like it. T.CHR.B. Hmm. This one worries me a bit. This, there's a pattern on this chart called a falling uh, or a rising wedge. I'm just going to draw on this chart here so you can see this. So just hold on for a moment and I will, where's my drawing tool gone? Oh, here, right in front of me. So just draw some lines. So there's the upward trend line. We'll draw that one in green. And there's the line of resistance. We'll draw that in red. Notice how the line of resistance is shallower than the line of support. What that tells me is that the buyers are losing power. And then today you had a breakdown through the upward trend line right there. That's a pretty strong signal that that stock is going to pull back. So I think that this stock is a sell today. Uh, let me just take a look at a three-year chart of it. Yeah, I mean, longer term, it's still okay. I think short term, it's going to pull back, and you probably can buy it back cheaper in a week. I, I still like the longer term chart, but I just think short term, it's going to make a little bit of a pullback. Um, what else here? How much of, of your account do you risk on a position trade, same as a J trade? I don't think you ever want to risk more than 2 or 3%, but it's really a function of how much risk you can tolerate. If you sleep well, uh, risking 3%, fine. If you only sleep well risking 1% of your portfolio on a trade, then that's your limit. So I don't think anyone should go over 3%, but that doesn't mean 3% of your portfolio goes into one stock. That means 3% of your portfolio is risked on one stock. That's the difference between what you buy it for and where you would set your stop. Um, in Chapter 30 of your book, Good Reads, Starting an Application with Day Trade. Oh, so this person's reading my book, looking to get the mentorship, although I can't day trade. Is the value still worth it for later? Um, I think so. I, it's something I'd rather talk to you about on a, in a conversation directly, just to go through the different things that you have to think about. It's really a function of how much capital you have, how much time you have, what your risk tolerances are, that sort of thing. If you need some help deciding what course is right for you, then let me know, and I'm happy to discuss that with you. Um, so one person is noticing that the stock score simple scans don't have abnormal activity in them. You're right. Um, those are not must for position trades. We do like to have them, but I don't build it into the filter because some stocks still have a good chart without that. So uh, they're definitely better if they have those things. All right. Um, another question. Are you my, am I a flames? Am I in the flames wagon or have I always been a fan? Listen, I've been a diehard fan since I was... Uh, well, since the Flames came to Calgary, which was probably 
when I was 12 or 13. So I've suffered many years uh, recently being a Flames fan, and uh, I'm looking forward to the game, which starts in uh, a few minutes. So if you are already one of my students and you just want to repeat the class in May, there's someone asking me that question now, it's $195. So if you took the course in November or March or whenever, and you want to just do it again, you pay $195. So um, I've sent out a number of emails to our students, but if you didn't get it, somehow it landed, ended up in a spam folder or something, just send me an email and I'll send you those details. All right, I think I've caught most of the questions. I may have missed a couple, but if I missed yours, my apologies. I'm going to wrap up for now and, uh, and just put my contact information up there. If you would like me, uh, if you have any questions for me, just email me, tylerb at stockscores.com. Follow me on Twitter. I put out tweets once in a while with some comments about the market and tra trading in general. So you just look up me on Twitter with at StockScores. And then on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. That's the address for the YouTube channel. And uh, I upload videos on a regular basis, free videos that you can watch. Every week I do a market analysis video called the Market Minutes. And if you subscribe to my channel on YouTube, you'll get a little alert when I've uploaded that. And those are free to watch. Watch them as many times as you like. I think they're quite valuable. And uh, hopefully you enjoy that as well. Um, yeah, that's all the questions I've got from you, so I think I'll wrap it up. Thank you everyone for participating. More webinars coming up. We have quite a few this month, so if you go to the Stock Scores website, go to the home page, there's all of our webinars coming up. Next one is Wednesday, How I Day and Swing Trade the Market. That'll be done during market hours, so if you want to see what I do during the trading day, you can watch that one, 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday next week. The following Saturday, or that Saturday, I'm going to do my presentation on the secret to finding hot stocks. That's one of my favorites. Um, most people tend to really like that presentation, so I encourage you to join in that one. And we're all gearing up for the class in May. May 15th is the deadline for the discounts and the extra stuff, so make sure if you're interested in doing that course, you get your questions asked of me, and I'll help you decide what course is right for you or whether the courses are right for you at all. Um, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the hockey game if you are a Flames fan. If you're not, well, maybe it's time to be one. There's not much left to do. Of course, we have our friends in Montreal. I guess you can cheer for them. Uh, have a good night, everyone. We'll see you next presentation. Good night.